Let's talk about mind and body hacks for depression that don't require any form of medication. Depression. How do you know if you're depressed? Have you ever felt like you're wearing invisible sunglasses and a commercial vacuum just sucked out every ounce of energy and joy that you had left in your body for days, weeks, months, years, basically till the end of time? Now, if you answered yes to this question, which based on the statistics, you probably have. I already answered yes. Then you know what it feels like to be depressed. Depression is a part of you. It's your life. You sleep, eat, and breathe depression. It's a horrible, debilitating, helpless feeling. And once it sinks in, it claws into you and it can be ready to shake you to its clutches. However, with that being said, no matter what triggered your depression, it's possible to get yourself back on track and set yourself free. It just takes time, it takes effort, it takes a bit of energy, sometimes it takes help, and there's healthy ways to deal with depression that don't require any form of medication. The first key to becoming aware that you're feeling depressed is to become self-aware. And you do this so that way you don't have to let it spiral too far out of control before taking steps toward your healing process. Some mind and body symptoms of depression include loss of interest, in areas of your life that used to bring you joy. Difficulty with sleep, either sleeping more, sleeping less, interrupted sleep, insomnia. Changes in appetite, either overeating or undereating, or just not even being in the mood to eat. Maybe you eat and you throw up right away. That can happen. Feeling irritable, sad, crying unexpectedly, with no clear precipitating event, wanting to isolate yourself from others, Feeling a heaviness or aches and pains in your body that have no medical explanation. That's me. Lack of energy. I think that's all of us, really. No matter who we are and what mental health condition, what mental health condition we suffer from, we always feel that lack of energy. Suicidal ideation. If you have suicidal thoughts, it's very important to get yourself to a doctor or hospital immediately. So now that we got that stuff out of the way, let's go right into the nitty gritty science based stuff. And these are mind and body tips that can help you heal depression without taking any medication. The first one I can vouch for, try something new. Go out, get a hobby, maybe buy a bike, take up painting, take up knitting, take up crafting, maybe write stories, anything that can help you distract yourself in your de from your depression. It's been proven that trying new things alters your levels of dopamine, which is the chemical in your brain associated with pleasure and enjoyment. I can vouch for this. Not sure what new stuff to try? Keep it simple. Again, what I just mentioned. Take a new route to work. Go somewhere different for lunch. Watch a YouTube video about a hobby that you want to learn. There's a lot of crochet and knitting tutorials here if you want to take those things up. Um, maybe try on a different outfit, buy different clothes. You go on a meetup site so you can meet someone new. There's a lot of options that you can pick from. You just have to know what you want to try and how to step out of your comfort zone pretty much. The next one, get light. Sunlight boosts mood and vitamin D levels, which is connected to your mood, and can tackle depression. If you live somewhere that gets a little sun, buy a therapeutic light box. For convenience, you can wear your light therapy in a visor so you can multitask your healing with your morning routine. Hmm, I never thought about that one. Practice gratitude. New studies show that having a daily ritual of gratitude is as effective as taking antidepressants. Your ritual can include writing down things you're grateful for or mentally focusing on things that you're thankful for. Keep in mind, in order for this practice to be effective for treating depression, your ritual needs to be on a regular basis. You can't just do it on a Monday, forget about it till Friday, and then do it on Friday. It has to be on a routine. That's the thing with those of us who suffer from depression or any mental health disorder in general. Routines kind of help us keep our conditions at bay. If we break our routine, it goes all topsy-turvy. Be social. When you're depressed, 
your tendency usually is to want to isolate yourself. That's the worst thing to do. You shouldn't isolate yourself. However, it's very important to do everything you can do to push yourself through that desire of isolation and try to spend time with at least one other person, one loved one, family member, friend, someone you can talk to, even if it means just going to see a counselor. And sometimes that's all you have to talk to is a counselor. Being social is a major defense against depression. If you can't bear to push yourself to get out and be social, join private groups on Facebook. There's one called the Mind Body Wise Living Room, or at least phone a friend. Eat. This one is bittersweet because I don't really eat. My depression, my anxiety, it kind of makes it hard for me to eat when it feels like I have a toilet plunger on my chest just sucking out all the energy. But don't skip meals. Try and keep a constant eating pattern. Have a food diary. Keeping your blood sugar stable helps you maintain a stable mood. Low blood sugar can lead to feelings of depression, even if you aren't clinically depressed. Well, I guess that makes sense. Having a smart diet. That one's pretty straightforward. To eat foods that increase your brain's serotonin levels to decrease depressive symptoms. A few recommendations based on studies and my own experience. Eat a high protein diet, aim for foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, including wild salmon, sardines, herring, mackerel, anchovies, and eat foods and oils that contain healthy fats like coconut oil, flaxseed oils, eggs, and avocados. Avocados, I never thought about eating them, but apparently if you eat that with an egg, it's more healthier than eating, I guess, toast and an egg. So. Maybe I'll try it out on my next um, grocery shopping ex excursion. This one I'm still working on. Keep hydrated. With that, drink a lot of water. Don't drink like seven cups of coffee and think you're going to be hydrated. That's kind of the worst thing to do. But when you aren't well hydrated, your body gets fatigued. Your fatigue can mimic feelings of depression. So make sure you're drinking more than enough water. Sometimes it's good to just have a water bottle that you can keep full throughout the day. People don't charge you for water. You can go to Starbucks, get a glass of water, ice water for free. Tim Hortons, coffee shops, like water's there. If you need a drink, just go ask. You can't get billed for asking for a cup of water if that's what you're worried about. 16 ounces is pretty good. 20 ounces is also pretty good too. Just um, make sure you keep hydrated throughout the day. That's basically what I'm trying to say with this one. You can meditate. This practice is simply about being present and mindful to the moment to moment to experience. It can be done sitting still or even while walking. Training our bodies, hearts, and minds to be whatever arises provides us with unconscious tools for better navigating ourselves and navigating our lives. There have also been many studies that show meditation can be very helpful for alleviating symptoms of depression, which is true. Breathing exercises are pretty good to do also. Yoga is good. Again, meditation. And that brings us to our next point, which is practicing yoga. For yoga, you don't even have to leave your house to practice it. You can get free yoga trials on the internet. You can go to YouTube, watch people doing self-help videos for yoga. This magical combination of movement synchronized with breath does wonders for your mental and your physical health. You ever want to watch something pretty cool? Alien yoga. I don't know how they do that with their bodies, but it's like they, they're they exercising their kidneys. I, I'm not sure. But many studies prove that yoga alone can completely shift your mood in depth and profound ways. Because there are so many different styles and types of yoga, and they're all great for your health, try different ones. Find the one that you think is better suited for you. You don't have to just stick to one. Oh, and also, fun fact, you don't have to be flexible to do yoga. It's not about being flexible at all. This one, you can try online therapy. So you can use Mind Body Wise, you can use BetterHelp. And you can talk to certified licensed psychiatrists online counselors and they'll be able to help you build like a little game plan to help you keep your mental health at bay and that brings us to our actual talk therapy so going to talk to a counselor talking to a psychiatrist a therapist talk therapy can be very helpful 
for everyone, really. It's always good to just go, let your feelings out, let everything off your chest. You don't have to keep things bottled in and talk therapy. They don't judge you. They don't criticize you. They just try and help you. That's what they're there for. They're there to help you work out a game plan to keep your mental health at bay and in some cases even help you get on medication. But this, this video is not about being on medication. They can also help you with breathing exercises and different websites to go to, self-help books, audiobooks. It's always good to consider talk therapy because you never know. That might be the one medium that works for you in the end. Exercising is also a pretty big one. This ties into pretty much other stuff I just said. You can go for a run, go for a jog, walk your dog, and it increases your endorphins, uh, which helps uplift your mood. Plus, you get all your other physical benefits that the exercise provides. I know for a lot of people, it's pretty difficult to get motivated to exercise, especially when you're depressed. So try getting a friend to go with you, or again, if you have a pet, walk with them. You have to take your dog out for a walk anyway. So just go for a little walk, maybe do a little jog while you're walking with them. It can help you. Changing your shape. So I guess basically change your body posture, stand straight, sit straight, walk instead of driving or taking a bus if you can walk. Enjoy nature. Let your body relax and like mellow down. You don't always have to keep it constricted. To increase confidence and lower your stress hormones, stand tall for two minutes with your arms in the air, taking up as, taking up as much space as you can with your body. Smiling. I don't really smile, but when you're depressed and you don't feel like smiling, a fake smile can go a long way, and it helps change your brain chemistry to get the feel-good chemicals flowing. If you can't muster a fake smile, try putting a pen in between your teeth horizontally. It forces your lips to curl up and signals your brain to turn on the dopamine. Interesting. I didn't know about this one. And our last point is get creative, but that's basically how I started off the first point. So do different things like crafts, photography, cooking, writing, drawing, knitting. Just let your creative side flow. And if all this doesn't work, then you can still go and go and consider getting medication because medication can still help you too. These are just ways you can try and combat your depression without having to resort to going to take different kinds of medication to try and find the one that actually helps you. Remember, if you're suffering from depression, it's important to remember that you're not alone. It's okay to not be okay, and there's a lot of support out there available to you. You don't have to handle depression on your own, and don't wait till it gets worse. Take action now. Talk to someone. And with that, I thank you for tuning into this video, and I'll see you in the next one.